Okay. Uh, thank you, Todd. Uh, my name is uh, John Aronson, and I'm part of the Westgrid team here at the University of Manitoba. And we look after the Grex cluster. And uh, before I start the seminar, I just wanted to point out that if you have any questions there is there, during the seminar, um, or any questions about what I'm going to talk about here, you can contact the Westgrid support team at support.westgrid.ca. And most of you will also have local support staff that you can contact as at your university. And we also have some online documentation. And that's where the slides from this uh, seminar will be posted, as well as, I think, uh, archived video of this talk. So uh, my objective uh, for this talk is to sort of provide you an overview of uh, development tools that we have at Westgrid. And I'm going to focus on uh, techniques for optimizing your code. And, uh, I'm, and at the end, I'm going to talk about some more advanced optimization and parallelization, hopefully sort of to give you an overview of, uh, of how you can optimize your code and uh, different techniques and strategies you can use. And I'm going to focus on the uh, Intel compiler suit. It's not intended to be a sales pitch for, for the Intel compilers. Uh, but they're available at all Westgrid sites, and they usually give the best performance. Not in all cases, but uh, usually. And there's much more to talk about, so this is really just uh, sort of an introduction to sort of just give you some hints where to start, and uh, maybe hopefully some helpful advice. <clears throat> so to start, I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, available compilers within Westgrid. I'm going to go over optimization with compiler flags. And then I'm going to give you some strategies for advanced optimization and give you a very brief introduction to parallelization. So all Westgrid systems have the GNU and the Intel compilers. And uh, a few Westgrid systems also have the PGI compilers, which is another uh, commercial compiler. And uh, so which compiler should you use? Uh, I would suggest, well, first you should use the compiler that works for your application, in some cases. Cases there might you, uh, your application may only compile with one compiler, or you can use the compiler that gives you the best performance. And in particular, if you develop your own code, I would suggest that you try to use multiple compilers uh, because it, it might help you find bugs. For example, one compiler might give you compiler warnings that another compiler may not notice, and in some cases. Uh, your code might crash when it's compiled with one compiler due to a memory bug, uh, whereas with another compiler, it might just run cleanly, even though there is a bug in the code. And it also makes your code more portable. The chances are, if it compiles nicely with uh, a few compilers right now, it's probably going to compile relatively well on future compilers as well. And uh, compilers usually include more than just the compiler itself. You should have debuggers and profilers and other uh, tools uh, that's part of the, the compiler. Uh, the GNU compilers, which is available at all Westgrid sites, is uh, it's a collection of compilers and tools that's uh, free software and is available for most operating systems and CPU architectures. So it will give a, <clears throat> give you a very, uh, if it compiles for, for, for those compilers, it should be very uh, portable. And we have the C, C++, and Fortran compilers on all Westgrid systems. And on some systems, we also have the other GNU compilers, including Java, Ada, Go, and uh, other languages as well. And uh, they support uh, OpenMP and MPI parallelization. And the Intel compiler suit, uh, and Westgrid would have the C, C++, and Fortran compilers on all systems. And they usually also include other development tools uh, that may or may not be installed, uh, which include a profiler, a memory a checker, a debugger, and thread and MPI analyzers, which are helpful for uh, parallel uh, programming. And they also include, uh, the Intel compilers also include additional components that are uh, compatible with the GNU compilers as well, including the math kernel library, and there's a thread building blocks, uh, which is a C++ template library for uh, multi-core uh, type parallelism, and has uh, several um, 
containers for, for standard algor algorithms. And there's also the integrated performance primitives, which include uh, 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 algorithms for signal processing and image processing and statistics. And uh, the Intel compiler support prioritization with uh, MPI, OpenMP, and something called Click Plus, which I'm going to talk about briefly towards the end of this talk. So when you optimize your code, uh, a first step you can take is to ask the compiler about your code. And if you use the Intel compilers, you can use the option minus opt report. And that will generate a report that uh, tells you about what optimization the compiler was able to do and uh, what optimizations it, it was not able to do. And it will also give you some advice on what you could do to potentially uh, improve optimizations. And you, you, uh, when you call this, uh, this uh, uh, option, you can spe specify a number between one and three, uh, where one will give you the basic report, and then you can get more details by increasing the number. So to give you an example of what kind of information you might see, so here I'm, I'm compiling a test C code, and uh, here's it, it created much more output than this, but here's some examples. It tells me in the first uh, line here, it tells me that uh, on the line 160 in my code, I have poor memory locality, uh, and it suggests that if I replace my array of structs with uh, a struct of arrays, so if I uh, split out the variables in my struct and do each variable as an array, I might improve memory locality and performance. And then it tells me at, at uh, line 144, it unrolled my uh, for loop. And at line 190, it tells me that the loop was not vectorized because there is a vector dependency. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, uh, later on as well. On line uh, 290, uh, I also have poor memory locality due to uh, the stride through the array in a non-unit uh, stride. And if I trans transpose my data, then I might improve memory locality and performance. And then it tells me that I have a couple more loops that were unrolled. So uh, by default, if you compile your code without using any optimization flags, it will try to minimize the compilation time while uh, making debugging predictable. And to enable optimization, you can use the minus 01, 2, and minus 03 flags, and they will provide increasing levels of optimization. However, when you optimize your code, you may make debugging uh, difficult because the compiler might delete code or reorder uh, the, the, the order in which the operations are done in order to improve performance. And uh, so minus 01 will give you the basic optimization. Minus 02 will enable most optimizations. And that's usually what is recommended for regular non-HPC codes. Uh, that's what Intel, for example, would recommend that you use. But if you're an HPC user, or if you do a lot of heavy floating point calculations inside your code, then uh, minus 03 is the recommended level. And uh, what kind of optimizations would the compiler do? Uh, one very important optimization is it does what's called auto vectorization. And it tries to enable SIMD operations. Uh, SIMD stands for single instruction multiple data. And if you look at the little figure here, uh, if you uh, operate, if you process your code with, without these instructions, it would operate on one piece of uh, data at a time. So we do A plus B, give you the result, and then do the next A plus B, and give you the result. Whereas with a SIMD instruction, it can uh, do multiple um, um, input values at the same time and in a single, in a single clock cycle. So for example, on Grex, uh, 
the SIMD instruction can do two double precision numbers at the same time, or four floating point numbers, and at uh, at, at a single clock cycle on the newer um, processors. So the latest generation on the Intel processors, you could do four doubles or eight floats, and on the next generation of Intel processors, uh, the uh, you'd be able to do eight doubles or uh, uh, 16 single precision operations per cycle. And uh, so you can see how this can give you a, 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 a very large performance gain if, uh, if the compiler is able to vectorize your code. And uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about, about this in a little bit more detail later on. Another uh, important optimization is inlining of functions, where the compiler takes a function that you call and inserts it into your code instead of calling it if it believes this would be beneficial to do so. Uh, loop transformations is uh, another important area where it tries, where, where it would transform your loops by merging them, splitting them, unrolling them in order to improve memory locality and performance. Uh, data uh, prefetching is another important optimization where it tries to prefetch data into cache before you use it in order to avoid uh, the code getting stuck while waiting for for uh, data from main memory. Uh, another uh, and another level of optimizations can uh, can be enabled if you uh, if you tell the compiler to optimize for a specific HPC uh, for a, a specific CPU architecture, and there's uh, Three different flags I would like to mention. The first one is the minus M code, and this tells the compiler to optimize the code with all the instructions up to level code uh, instruction set. And this will optimize for both Intel processors and non Intel processors. So this will make your uh, code perhaps more portable because uh, it should uh, work well on AMD processors, for example. Uh, the next option is minus X code, which will do the same thing, but it will target Intel processors. And there might be some additional uh, features in the Intel processors uh, that it will try to optimize for. And this can cause your code to not run on other processors or could make it run slower on other processors potentially. So for example, if you do uh, minus X SSE 4.2, you tell the compiler to optimize uh, up to the SSC 4.2 instruction set, which is available on the Intel uh, Xeon uh, 5500 and newer. And then if you run it on the older processor, the code will probably fail. Uh, you can also use the minus X host to tell the compiler to look, look to see what architecture you have on your current, on the machine where you're compiling and then uh, use uh, those, that, those instruction sets to optimize the code. Another uh, very useful option is the minus X, minus AX code, which tells the compiler to generate additional code paths for uh, uh, multiple processors. So you can create a, uh, an executable that has been optimized for multiple architectures. And then at runtime, the uh, the executable would check which uh, which architecture you have and then choose the appropriate code path. And thereby you can make sure you have uh, an optimized code for, for uh, multiple uh, hardware architectures. And this feature is, uh, is very important here in WestGrid because we have two, two clusters that have m m mixed CPU architectures. So the Bugaboo cluster and the Jasper cluster. And for those uh, uh, clusters, we recommend that you use uh, minus X SSE 3 and then add two code paths for uh, SSE 4.1 and 4.2. On other WestGrid uh, systems, you can use the minus X host, which will just optimize uh, based on the architecture that's available. Uh, and But it, it may make it it may mean that you have to recompile your code if you move from one system to another. Uh, 
The next uh, optimization that I like to talk about is called interprocedural optimization. And an interprocedural optimization will take your whole program and analyze it in order to perform global optimizations. And it will do things like detect, duplicate the code and eliminating it, improving memory layout and locality. And this is different from the sort of default uh, behavior that the compiler has, where it sort of splits your program into pieces and then optimize each loop or each function call separately. And the Intel compiler supports two modes. So the minus IP uh, tells the compiler to do uh, interprocedural optimization on each source file. And the minus IPO will do the optimization on all your source files together. So it does a whole program optimization. And usually, if you use the um, multipile IPO, you need to uh, specify this flag uh, minus IPO at both compilation and linking time. Uh, one caveat is if you use minus IPO and you have a large code, it can become extremely expensive and uh, take, take a very long time or it can even cause the compiler to crash. So, and, uh, so therefore, in general, we recommend that you use minus IP. Uh, which usually gives you a pretty good uh, 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 optimization. And you can also ask the compiler to provide your report on what it did when it did the interprocedural optimization. And you do that with, this, uh, with the opt report uh, option. And then you add the minus opt report phase equal to IPO. And I did that for a test code. And it, it tells me that, you know, uh, first here it tells me that my uh, source file mesh.c on line 22, it inline a function. And then it tells me that it found a, a dead, dead function that was, uh, is, it is not being used or it doesn't gener generate any data that's being used. So it deleted that function. And then at the end here, it tells me that it inlines some functions. It might be useful to, to get an idea of of, uh, of what, what the compiler does in order to better understand uh, how, how you may uh, improve your code. And uh, there's also the minus fast flag, which is sort of like a, a quick way of applying a few standard uh, optimizations for speed. It includes the minus IPO, minus O3, and minus X host that I talked about. It also includes something called uh, no prick div, which uh, may improve floating point divisions, in particular for vectorized operations. Um, and it also enables static linking, which you may or may not want. Uh, one, uh, one more thing I'd like to talk about uh, uh, is uh, compiler guided optimization. So when the compiler process your code and optimize your code, it does so without really knowing what kind of parameters you will feed your code or what kind of uh, data set. You know, for example, when it optimizes a loop, it may not know if you're going to do 10 iterations of the loop or if you're going to do 10 million iterations of the loop. And uh, the optimizations might depend on sort of the scale. So uh, one. With the profile guided optimization, it lets you take, uh, it lets you compile your code and then run the code and feed some statistics about how the program uh, ran back into the compiler to do a second pass of uh, optimizations, which, uh, which, and, and by doing so, you provide the information with more information, or the compiler with more information. And it may be able to uh, to optimize your code uh, more. Uh, when you do this, um, it's important that you pick a data set or an input data that's uh, statistically representative of your typical usage, because otherwise it might do optimizations that are not good for your um, pre-production data. And the way you do this is you do a, it's a three-phase procedure. 
So first you compile your, your code with minus prof gen without optimizations. And then you run your code with a char characteristic data set. And this will generate a file. And then you recompile your code again with the minus prof use. And that will grab this file that was generated and feed it into the compiler. And uh, I'll, before I move on, I'd like to show you an example of what kind of uh, difference these uh, flags might make. I, um, here I'm using a code I wrote a long time ago, actually. Uh, it solves an n body problem with uh, 1 million bodies using the fast multiple method. And that solves uh, the n body problem in almost linear time, uh, uh, n log n, in fact. And I compile it with the GCC compiler first, and then run in about 30 seconds. And then I add uh, uh, GCC minus all three, drop down to 20. One seconds, and then I added some additional um, flags and got it down to 20.4 seconds. And then I switched to the Intel compiler, and then without optimizations, it ran in 19 seconds. And then I added a minus all three for the standard aggressive optimization and got it down to 13.2. And then I told it to optimize for the host. I was running this on Grex. I got it down a little bit more to 12.6 seconds. Then I enabled a single file uh, interprocedural optimization, and that didn't really make a difference. But when I enabled the multi-file uh, interprocedural optimization, it dropped down to about 12 seconds. Then I tried uh, to use the profile guided optimization, and that didn't make a difference in this case. And then finally, I added to additional compiler flags, which could be dangerous optimizations, because they can break your program if uh, if uh, if you don't support these features. So first, I did a minus uh, minus f no alias, which I tell compiler that I don't have alias any on my pointers. So by alias pointers, I mean that I have pointers that uh, point to overlapping memory regions. So I told the compiler that all my pointers are independent, and then I was able to do more advanced optimizations, and I got it down to 7.7 .7 seconds, and then I told the compiler that I don't really care that my complex numbers are 100% accurate when they're close to the maximum and minimal values, and by doing so, I enabled some additional optimization with the minus complex limited range flag and got it down to 7.5 seconds. Uh, but uh, as I said, those two last options uh, uh, can be dangerous. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, more about the uh, aliasing in, in a little bit. Um, but so beyond, uh, so what I've been talking about up until now is sort of free optimization, where you, you don't modify your source code. You just uh, Add compiler flags, and uh, and and see what kind of performance you get. And I should also say that um, I should also mention that um, the performance you get with the different flags will depend on your application. So, for one application, you might get better performance with the GCC compilers than you will with the Intel compilers. Whereas with another compiler uh, code, you might get uh, better performance with the Intel compilers. And if you use profile guided optimization with one code, it might not make a difference. On another code, it might make a substantial difference. So you sort of have to take your code and, and see what works best for, for it. But beyond these sort of automatic optimizations, uh, you will need to start optimizing your source code. And the good news is that in some cases, you can do so with doing minimal changes by uh, simply embedding hints or what's called pragmas into your source code uh, without actually modifying the actual program code. And these hints will give instructions to the compiler that it can use when it's optimizing. And for a general strategy, uh, what I would suggest is 
you use some kind of profiler or you knew using knowledge about your code to identify the areas of the code where you spend the most time, uh, which would be hot spots. And then you focus your efforts on these hot spots. And so uh, general 80-20 rules of the Pareto principle tells you that about 80% of the time is spent in 20% of the code. Uh, usually it's, it's more than that. It's 90% of the performance spent in 10% of the code or even 99% but the time is spent on 1% of the code. So you, you take this little hotspot, and then you try to optimize that. And you can use uh, the feedback from the compiler. So the compiler report that I showed you, if you, you, can, you can check it and see if there's any um, advice on what you might be able to improve um, in order to, to, to uh, maximize uh, performance. If you're using a profiler, it might be able to provide you hints on what kind of changes you might be able to make to improve performance. And then you can sort of do this in an iterative process. You know, you ident identify your hotspots, optimize them, rerun, and then you might have a different hotspot and then focus on that. And then sort of iteratively uh, optimize your code until you, you're happy, basically. So I wanted to give you an example of what kind of hints you may be able to provide the compiler uh, to sort of uh, improve performance. So with the outer vectorization, uh, which I mentioned before, is a very important uh, optimization that the compiler does. And if, if, if you look at this loop, so here I'm looping over n values, and uh, the loop will uh, multiply vectors b and c and add this result into a. And if, by just looking at this, the compiler doesn't know if A, B, and C are uh, are pointers that overlap to the same memory region. Uh, so it doesn't know if they're independent. And if they're not independent, it can't apply the Cindy uh, uh, vectorization. So what you could do, you can embed a pound pragma Cindy directive to the compiler, and this tells the compiler that you guarantee that A, B, and C will be independent. And then the compiler can vectorize that loop. And if, 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 if you're wrong and they are, in fact, dependent, you, you might, your program might crash. Uh, so, so you need to take some care into this. And this is exactly what I did with the minus F no alias flag. Uh, earlier, I told the compiler that all my pointers are independent. So, you, and and they co told the compiler that you can do this kind of optimization safely. And there's many more sort of additional options you can add to this pragma SIMD. You can use things like reduction, uh, private variables similar to OpenMP, um, but sort of uh, that's beyond the scope of today's talk. Uh, Probably do a separate talk on just uh, on just these uh, keywords and and how you might be able to to uh, provide hints to the compiler. Uh, if you're using Fortran, you can do exactly the same thing with uh, dear dollar sign SIMD directive, and you can also use uh, the minus vec minus report option. It works very similar to the minus opt report option that I showed earlier. And this will generate a, a report on, uh, that includes um, what vectorizations the compiler did, what it didn't do, and give you some advice and hints on how you may be able to enable more vectorization in your code. Another strategy you can use if you're, uh, if you're a C, C++ user, you can use uh, the uh, click plus uh, extensions which are uh, included and in the Intel compilers. And they're also included in a branch of the GCC uh, 4.8 compiler. And I know Intel is currently working on getting it integrated into the mainline GCC compiler. Um, so if you use this, um, you call may not be portable uh, with other compilers than Intel compilers. So that's a, a one caveat. Uh, 
but the benefit we're using array notation uh, is that you're basically writing your code in uh, data parallel format, and that makes it easier for the compiler to, to vectorize your code. And uh, this feature is, uh, is already a standard feature in uh, Fortran, and that's one, one of the reasons, reasons why Fortran code usually um, optimize better uh, with compilers. And another benefit, that, of course, is it can make the code easier to read. Uh, so uh, that's one option you, you may or may not want to consider. Uh, so, so far, I've talked about optimizing the code with using compiler flags, uh, asking the compiler for a report and using that advice from the compiler to make code changes, I talk about vectorizing code, and I like to uh, mention again that vectorizing the code will be uh, more and more important in, in the future with future uh, uh, CPU architectures. And so what's next? Like if you're not happy with, with the results so far, like how can you optimize your code further? Well, you could do uh, profile your code repeatedly and sort of do the strategy of uh, iteratively profiling your code. Uh, that, that might be a good strategy. You may want to optimize your code for memory cache throughput. So you want to basically maximize your floating point operations. So usually for typical code, the code will only uh, use a fraction of the theoretical maximum uh, uh, the the, uh, of the number of floating point operations the compiler can uh, the CPU can technically uh, perform. For example, with a modern Intel processor, you can do on an order of uh, 10 billion uh, floating point operations per second. And usually you only achieve a fraction of this because the, your program stalls waiting for memory or grabbing data from cache or the data is not in the register when, when it needs the data. And so uh, a more advanced level of optimization would be to sort of try to redesign your algorithm so that uh, so that you improve or so that the algorithm matches the hardware architecture better and is able to to uh, to use more flowing point operations per second. But this sort of level of optimization can get very complicated. So I I would. I suggest that you don't do it unless you're a really advanced uh, programmer. And another strategy you can do is to, to look for existing libraries that are, pre, that are already uh, optimized. And many of these libraries will be optimized to actually perform close to the theoretical uh, limit of the, of the actual hardware. So if you're able to use a library, you should use the library. Another direction you can do is to parallelize your code to run the multiple processes. And of course, in, uh, within Westgrid or the HPC community, that's a very common strategy that I'm sure you all are familiar with. I, I like to mention uh, uh, one library that, that's part of the Intel compiler suite, and that's available in all Westgrid systems. And it's the Intel uh, math kernel library. And it includes uh, a lot of routines. It includes all the standard linear algebra packages like Blast LatePak, Scalable LatePak. It also includes uh, sparse solvers. It includes the FFT libraries, and including the FFTW uh, interface and uh, routines for vector math, random number generation, and many more. And the benefit with these routines are they already optimized and they usually already parallelized so you can sort of get free uh, performance by using these. Uh, one caveat though with the Intel compiler is that it's a proprietary uh, library and uh, so you need a license in order to, to use it so it might limit your portability uh, but it is compatible with Windows, Linux and Mac and it supports most common compilers. 
So in that sense, it's, it's fairly portable. And uh, to use MKL, uh, there's a tool called the MKL uh, Link Line Advisor. It's available on, the, on Intel's website. And if you go to this uh, website, you, you'll be sent with a form where you, you can tell where, where it will ask you what kind of operating system you're using, what kind of compiler, and whether you do static or dynamic linking, whether you want a parallel version or a, a serial version, and then I'll tell you how to um, what what a, a compiler flags to use. And uh, RESTGrid also supports many more libraries. MKL is just one example of all the libraries we support. And we have a list of most supported libraries on our website under westgrid.ca support software. And we will install more libraries as users request them. And so my advice would be that you look for a library to do a job before you develop your own code to do it, because libraries are often well optimized and it will save you time. So the last thing you can do, uh, or at least that I'm going to talk about today, is to parallelize your code. Uh, and it, the typical challenge with parallelizing code is you, you need to take your algorithm and divide the computations that it performs into pieces that can run across multiple processors. Uh, simultaneously. And the most common approach to this problem is that you divide up your data and then you send one chunk to each processor. Uh, but another approach could be to divide up your algorithm. And there are two, two main programming models uh, that I'm going to mention here. Uh, it's the shared memory model and the distributed memory model. So here is a, an illustration of the common scenario, you have a, a, a serial prog, pro, uh, program that takes a piece of data, feed it into a function or, pro, or algorithm, and outputs a result. And so one way of parallelizing this would be to split up your data and send each chunk to the algorithm in parallel, and then reassemble the data and get the result. So uh, one programming model is called the shared memory model, and it's uh, it's basically a single machine or a single node that has a number of cores and a shared main memory, and uh, this would scale up to say a single compute node in a cluster. So in Grex, you can get up to 12 cores. If you use Hungary, uh, you can get up to which is our large uh, shared memory machine. You can get up to 2,048 cores. It's a familiar environment in the sense that it's the same architecture that you would have on your local workstation or laptop, which usually would have multiple cores uh, with a shared main memory. Uh, the disadvantage is that limited scalability because usually you're limited by the number of cores you have on your, on your local machine. So say, for example, 12. On, on a Grex compute node. And, uh, but if you do want to program for this architecture, there's a, a number of uh, programming tools that you could use. Uh, one is automatic parallelization. And that's basically telling the compiler to com parallelize the code for you. Usually, that doesn't work well at all. Usually, that's not a good idea. But sometimes, uh, it actually works. Uh, so it could be something you can try. Uh, with the Intel compiler, that has uh, there's a compiler flag called minus guide that will actually uh, give you suggestions on how you may want to parallelize the code. Uh, so you, you could use that, for example, to uh, to get feedback on how to parallelize your code and then uh, sort of iteratively parallelize your code with help of the compiler's advice. Another uh, uh, a programming tool you can use is called pthreads, which is uh, sort of a low-level implementation of threads. Um, it's, it's very flexible, but uh, probably uh, quite difficult to program. So I, I wouldn't recommend that to to uh, to a user unless you're uh, 
a, a skilled programmer. OpenMP is probably the most popular way of uh, parallelizing your code for the shared memory model. And OpenMP, with OpenMP, you you parallelize by embedding pragmas or hints into the, the code. So for example, if you have a for loop, you can embed a, a pragma before the loop to tell the compiler that uh, please parallelize this, this loop. And uh, there, there's many more options uh, there too. And like it, it, it's usually uh, quite straightforward to get some kind of basic parallelization going with OpenMP. Uh, another tool is uh, the Click Plus, which I mentioned earlier. Um, it also, in addition to have this array notation that helps with uh, vectorizing, it also has a number of uh, uh, keywords for uh, for parallelizing code, and it can it can be quite powerful in some cases uh, because it, it sort of uh, builds a, sort of a dependency graph in real time and sort of manages threads uh, automatically uh, for you. So sort of just like a pool, uh, use a model with a pool of threads. Uh, so it, it may be something you may want to investigate if, if you're interested in, in parallelizing for a shared memory model. The other model is the, the distributed memory model. And this is uh, more scalable and inexpensive because you know, it can run across multiple machines. So it would be compatible with all the clusters we have here in Westgrid. And uh, it, you, know, you can run anything from one processor to thousands of processors within Westgrid. Uh, perhaps one disadvantage, depending on your algorithm, is that it has limited amount of memory per core. And it could be harder to program, but if you program your code in with, with for, for this model, it's it's uh, it will give you more flexibility, and you'll be able to get more cores and more performance. Uh, so that's definitely something, uh, definitely a model that we would recommend that you pursue at least for Westgrid. And to to use uh, to use this model, uh, you would normally use the MP, uh, MPI, which stands for the Message Passing Interface Library. Uh, another model that's becoming more popular uh, recently is called is sort of a hybrid model where you do shared memory parallelization within each node and then you do distributed memory parallelization between the nodes. Uh, this model is becoming more important with, uh, with the current trend of having more and more cores on a single uh, on, a, on a single node and if you use uh, say MPI to do all the communication, you, you might run into a bottleneck uh, could, just because you have so many cores on each, uh, on each node. Uh, so then it may be one model that you may want to look into. One benefit with this model, of course, is that it gives you the flexibility of having both models uh, implemented, uh, but it would definitely uh, create more programming effort and uh, in many cases, it may not be that beneficial uh, to put in that extra effort. So in summary, uh, I talked about op strategies for optimizing code. So I suggested that you first use compiler flags and see what kind of uh, performance you can get and to see what works best for your application. And then I suggested that you ask the compiler to give you advice and or use a profiler and then sort of try to uh, optimize hotspots or locations in the code that where most time is spent. If you can use an existing library to do a calculation, uh, I would say that that's usually a good idea. And, I, and, then, and then the final step you can take is to parallelize your code. And uh, to get more information, uh, you can to get more information about the compilers, you can, uh, when you log into the Westgate systems, you can use the MAN pages. So if you write MAN ICC, you will get the MAN page for the Intel C compiler. And there it will outline like all the different uh, 
flags you can use for optimization. And there's many more uh, flags than what I mentioned today. So you may want to look at see if there's any flag that might be suitable for your code. Uh, you can also go to the Westgrid support pages where we have some documentation. We also have an uh, archive. Um, we have uh, at the seminars uh, are archived on that website. And if you go through the archive, you'll see that in the past we've been giving uh, seminars on say, open MP parallelization and MPI parallelization. So if you're interested in, in that, you may want to go into uh, and look at those past seminars. And the final thing uh, you could do is say, ask Westgate support. You know, if you have any questions about optimizing your code or using a library or need help with paralyzing, you can send us a question and, and someone will try to help you. And I, I would be happy to help you and I, I know my colleagues have um, just as much knowledge as me and maybe even more about, uh, about these sort of optimizations and I'm sure they would be happy to help you too. Uh, so I would definitely recommend that you do that. And then just uh, uh, at the end, I would just I mentioned again that we have a single email address for support, and that's support at westgrid.ca. And you have local support staff that you can contact. And we also have the online documentation that I just mentioned. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. And uh, once we run out of questions for me, uh, feel free to stay and, and talk to your local support staff. I believe that there should be support staff at all or most of the sites, and, and they'll be able to answer questions as well. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, any questions from any of the remote sites? Looks like you yeah, we, are, we have one here, Todd. <clears throat> and so you, Vic, hold on. University of Alberta first. Uh, my question was, uh, can Click Plus be used with GCC compilers? Uh, Click Plus, it can be used with the GCC compiler if you install the, there's a branch of the latest compiler that has the support. So you would have to go and grab that uh, branch and install it. I don't think we currently have it on the Westgate system. But, uh, but this is the like stable. I mentioned, uh, I'm sorry? Uh, no, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, is this a stable version of the GCC compiler, the latest stable version? Uh, it is, yeah. It's the 4.8 version. Okay, okay thanks. Yeah, uh, no John, by the way, Blade in, on the text chat has noted that it's actually, I believe, Silk Plus, not Click Plus. Blade, uh, I don't okay. know if you want to comment plus. on that. Yes. Yeah, C-I-L-K. Just for clarification, Blade, uh, did you have a question at University of uh, Victoria? Yes, we do. Uh, so I, I've had some experience with O3 sometimes uh, changing the results of a program uh, for unknown reasons. Uh, would the, uh, the the opt report actually maybe give indication on where where the this is occurring? Okay, I had trouble hearing you because it's really quiet. But I think you asked if the minus O3 uh, flag will, you, you said I believe, it, it, it can I believe he after. Said, sorry, he said 03 uh, changed the output, uh, and he was wondering if uh, the output file would show what it was changed, I believe. Like, could you use opt report to change your code so that 03 optimization would not have the detrimental effects? Yes, you could. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any other questions from any other sites? If not, I'd like to thank Jonathan. And uh, as he mentioned, feel free to uh, follow up with your local site tech or site lead who happens to be in the room, and uh, or else follow up to support at westgrid.ca directly. And uh, thank you again, Jonathan, and thank you all for showing up. Thank you.